This is the sixth FOA video on instructor training. In this video, we're going to talk about teaching a course for FOA certification, and we'll share with you the feedback that we've gotten from dozens of experienced instructors who've been teaching for 20 years or more on what makes a good course and develops good knowledge and skills for your students. Before teaching a course, you need to get started by setting realistic goals to meet your student needs. You need to have complete lesson plans for the whole course, have defined all your classroom materials like textbooks, presentation handouts, resources, and your lab should be set up you should have all your equipment and all your materials and be ready to start. The FOA Master Instructors have helped you understand what's involved in teaching a course by creating what we call KSAs, knowledge, skills, and abilities that the students need to get from their class. The knowledge will come from the classroom, the skills will come from the labs, the abilities are mostly innate, but they're developed in the labs into skills. And you can go to the FOA website and read what all the KSAs are for the various courses. Remember, of course, that all students are different. They come with different abilities and different prior knowledge, and they learn at different rates in different ways, and your class must be able to accommodate them. You need to set realistic goals for the class. What is the student expected to master? The knowledge and the skills, the KSAs that the FOA has developed. What tasks are to be performed as part of the class? Each student learns in different ways, and it's helpful to understand that so that you can help the students progress through the class. But you have to make sure that the schedule for the class is realistic, that adequate time is allowed for classroom and lab activities, but not too much so the students become bored. The students are expected to learn from the course knowledge about the technology, the applications of fiber optics, components, installation, and test. They're supposed to develop adequate skills in pulling and prepping cables, termination, splicing, testing, and troubleshooting, all appropriate to the idea of what the class is trying to achieve. So it may be different in different classes for different students. The students should learn from the presentations in the classroom and participate in the discussions. They should be given outside assignments from the textbook or the web, and don't forget the quizzes the FOA has made available at the end of the chapters in the textbook and on the web. In the labs, they should do hands-on activities that are appropriate for the orientation of the course. These may include cable handling, termination, splicing, testing, troubleshooting, or more. Remember that each student is different. They learn in different ways and at different rates. So you should cover the materials fast enough to keep the faster students interested, but don't lose the slower ones. And vary the activities so everyone gets a chance to do something that they enjoy. Is the schedule for your course realistic? One of the things you can do to properly prepare for the course is create a lesson plan. This one was created by Tom Collins of Gateway Community College, who's a member of the Board of Directors of the FOA. Let's see how Tom fills in his lesson plan. He talks about the level of the course and the subject, the overview and purpose, the educational standards addressed, the reference materials, the objectives of the course, the materials needed, and all of these issues help him to plan to teach a course 
that meets the objectives of the course and meets the needs of his students. We'll give you a few seconds to take a longer look at this. Classroom materials should include a textbook or links to the FOA online reference guide because that's what the knowledge part of the uh, course and the exam are based on. Handouts for presentation in the form of PowerPoint slides with notes should be provided. Uh, instructors these days sometimes don't print them but provide them as a PDF file for their student. Students should be given pages that describe outside reading and notes about what they're expected to bring to class. Generally papers, pencils, calculators, and textbooks are the classics, but these days it's becoming more expected that a student will bring a laptop or a tablet. Teachers should also have demonstration gear. We recommend you get samples of cable connectors, splices, and other fiber optic components to show your students as part of the class. Most of us use PowerPoint or Keynote presentations when we teach a course. The slides should be concise and clear with the text kept large for easy reading. Photos should also be large and clearly visible. Use the notes section to explain what every slide means. And when you print out the slides or do an electronic copy for your students, we recommend you put a slide per page and include the printed notes. That way you have plenty of room for students to make notes in the printout, plus they know what you meant that slide to mean. When you're getting started, we always suggest you introduce yourself Present the goals and rules for the class. Review the class schedule and activities. Discuss the materials provided, the assignments and outside projects. Then, in the first session, have a discussion about safety. Pass out safety glasses for every student and discuss the safety rules that will be used when teaching the class. And oh, by the way, the instructor must wear safety glasses when doing lab exercises just like the students. To keep the students interest, it's always good to vary your presentation. When you do lectures, make sure your slides are easily understood and varied, not all looking the same. When you, when you have time in the class, do demonstrations, pass out samples of fiber optic components like cables or connectors, show how things work. When you're doing labs, do a demo before you start the lab so the students know what they will be doing during the lab. Use various media. Of course, use your PowerPoint slides, but add in video. FOA has over 60 videos on YouTube that you can use. And if you can't stream into your classroom, contact us. We'll provide them to you on DVD. Use web access. Use everything you can to communicate effectively with your students. One of the uh, best kept secrets, I'm afraid, of the FOA is that we have a lot more curriculum materials than just the basic presentations. We have specialist certifications that have their own PowerPoints and instructor guides on cables, termination, splicing, testing, and installation. And you can use the PowerPoints from those specialist presentations to edit down and show what's appropriate for your labs. And it can make your labs much more effective.
For example, in termination, we show step by step how to do all the different types of termination. And in cables, we show how to prep cables for splicing and termination in the same PowerPoints that are used in these specialist presentations. Teaching works best when it's a conversation, not a lecture. Ask the students questions. Listen for their feedback and see if they're comprehending what you're trying to teach. Look for nonverbal cues, yeah, like snoring or falling asleep or texting in class. Always accept and answer questions. But one of the things that's very important is if you don't know the answer to the question, don't make it up. Admit you don't know it. Tell the student it's something you've not been asked and haven't run across and assign the student the, pro the problem to find out the correct answer. And of course, manage your time carefully. Pace the class and try to stay on schedule, but leave time for questions, slow students, stories, and the like. Don't be like me. I often tell so many stories, though, that sometimes we have trouble finishing the class. Well, it's a fact of life that sometimes in classes you have problem students. You have people who are extremely experienced and nobody knows why they're taking the course, but they always want to interrupt the course and tell about their opinion or their way of doing it or their experience. You have know-it-alls. You have questioners who ask, well, quite frankly, too many questions. You have people who talk to their other students. You have people who are just plain rude because they don't want to be there. And you have slow learners. Well, you are the boss. You've got to run the class. For people who are experienced, use their opinions to help teach the class. But for everybody, if they interrupt the class too much, eventually you have to tell them that they're holding back everybody in the class and they must let the class go forward, and you can talk to them after class. Since we're talking about a class for FOA certification, we need to dis discuss that. The FOA certification tests for basic knowledge through an exam and requires the instructor to sign off that the student has achieved the basic skills appropriate to the certification. The exam that tests the knowledge of the student is based on the appropriate FOA textbooks or the FOA online reference guide. The instructor is provided with a guide to the book and a guide to the curriculum which they can use to help teach the course. The FOA has a philosophy developed from our master instructors that everyone certified by the FOA has the same basic knowledge. And that's very important and that's what we put in the KSAs. And remember all FOA exams are closed book proctored exams. The student must do their own work from memory. So we want you to teach the basics of fiber optics to ensure your students are successful. The first level exams are based on the FOA textbooks and reference guides, and they include fairly basic information. But of course, being a fast moving technology, that information can change fairly quickly. So we review the, the reference materials and the tests and update them all at the end of every year. So make sure you're using the latest curriculum materials, the latest textbooks, and the latest exams, which you download from the FOA school website. The basic FOA certification courses prepare the student for on-the-job training OJT. They're not designed to make them experts, but to make them knowledgeable enough and skillful enough 
that they can successfully go into the field and learn what they will actually use in the field. But we have advanced courses. They add to the knowledge base from the basic certification and develop skill through more hands-on exercises. We've set standards for these specialist classes as part of creating the certification, but the, all students must first complete a basic course for certification before they can qualify for the specialist courses. Specialist courses in, include the subjects of outside plant installation, termination, splicing, testing, design, and fiber to the home. And all of them cover these materials in much more depth. The school download site has curriculum materials and we recommend that instructors download these and look at how they can use them even bringing some of the material into their basic classes like for the labs and make their classes more effective for their students but we also want you to consider offering these as advanced courses for your students as many of our schools do because students want to learn more detail about more subjects. That completes part six of the FOA instructor training. We're now ready for part seven.